and welcome to National Signing Day. We're not at Lafayette College. We're not at the Kirby Sports Center by any stretch because of the situation, obviously, around the country. Everything is being done via Zoom, but that's okay. We can come into your home, and we've got an exciting night for you tonight as Lafayette will welcome on campus in uh, just uh, one more year uh, the five recruits who will be coming to Lafayette to play basketball. Uh, the women have three. The men have two. And speaking of recruits, I've recruited John Leone for another year to do basketball. And, and John, good to see you. Uh, I see you're living at the uh, at the court. In my dreams only, Gary. It's uh, I was, you know, it's not very far away from my house, so I figured I'd just bring it over here. But you're right; it's always an exciting time of year. A lot different this year in uh, in terms of the uh, the way uh, our coaches went about uh, enticing these good young players to come to campus. But they're here. That's the good news. We've seen some film on them, and they, boy, they they look pretty darn good. Well, speaking of enticing, we have enticed the coaches to join us tonight. We're going to start with Kia, Kia Damon Olson, who will be uh, joining us via. Uh, Zoom also uh, very soon. I know we're going to get a picture of her up there. There she is. Kia, it's really good to see you. It's been too long and, you know, we're all kind of confined to our own special space. Uh, tell us a little bit how difficult it's been for you as a basketball coach, not only to recruit, but also uh, to get some practices in. Well, first and foremost, it's great to see you guys and thank you um, for, for doing this. It's, it's fun to kind of get back into the routine. Um, but to your question, you know, it's been a challenge, but I, I think sports teaches you to adapt. And, you know, with technology, we we're able to see players play at various different tournaments. Um, and so we're able to recruit. And just in terms of, um, you know, practices, you know, it's, it's a lot of extra work to, to talk and be heard. Um, with the masks on uh, as we're playing, but you know things are going well. I, it, it's been a a long haul to get to this point with not only us but all the schools around the country. Just with getting kids back to campus, you know they've been with uh, away from us for so long that getting them back in shape, getting them back in a rhythm, you know, took a little bit of time. But I'm proud to say that you know we're in a really good spot. The recruiting process also has to have been quite difficult. Well, you know what? It's interesting for this class. We were actually able to go see them the, you know, the year prior um, before we, we hit COVID. So in terms of um, seeing them live, that really wasn't as much of an issue um, for, for Claire. It was a little bit different circumstance, but, um, you know, we were able to make some things work and, and we were able to secure their commitments rather early in the process. So that was good. I guess everybody or most people, I guess, are a little bit aware now of what the league's going to do in terms of scheduling. They have broken uh, the league down into three mini conferences. Uh, Lafayette's a mini conference, Bucknell, Lafayette, Lehigh. You'll play each of those uh, two teams four times and then spread around the league a little bit uh, by not having to travel too far. Uh, all the games on Saturday and Sunday, I would guess that you have to be somewhat pleased with uh, the decisions made by the league. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of factors to consider. Um, the health and safety has to be paramount. Um, and also knowing that we're going into potentially a second wave of um, COVID and trying to limit the overnight stays to limit potential exposure, you know, was at the top priority and the how we could achieve that within our geographical footprint. You know, we don't have too long of a ride for most of our games. And then, you know, we have a couple outliers where we'll have to travel for overnight when we have to go to Boston, but it's, it's limited. One more question before we get to uh, the following year. Let's talk a little bit about this coming year. You've got the five new freshmen coming on board. You've got an experienced basketball team uh, losing maybe one starter. And in some cases, having all five starters back. Uh, I assume uh, since everything has gotten better every single year, since you've been here through the four years now, uh, I assume you're optimistic. Yeah, I'm, I'm ecstatic about this year. Um, watching the kids play in practice, you know, you have to remember that um, we, we had two kids who were top six in the rotation, you know, maybe played seven games and, and then they were cheerleaders for us. And so in some ways they're like freshmen again, and, but it's, it's a good energy, a good rhythm to the team, good versatility to the team. Um, when you watch us play, you know, we, I've talked to them a lot about playing fast and transition, and I think they get that, but now we want to up the tempo and what we do in the half court. And that's really where we focused a ton of our energies. 
Well, the focus tonight, obviously, uh, is on National uh, Signing Day and our first recruit, Abby Anatole. Anna, I'm going to get it right. Anna Noli. Uh, Anna Noli. Is, yep. <laughs> yep. Anna Noli is our first uh, recruit. And uh, John, uh, let's take a look at Abby in motion. You and Coach, take it away. Yeah, well, buckle up your seatbelts because this little guy, I'll tell you right, she doesn't have an off button. Uh, the energy she brings is incredible. Uh, and I don't know how much you can tell about a player by the way they fill out their questionnaire. But if attention to detail has anything to do with it, this is who you want running the show. Uh, again, she's great off the dribble. And the thing I, when, when kids are so good with the ball, you want to see this. You want to see them be able to catch and shoot the ball because in that case, you got to choose your poison. You're either going to get up on her and she's going to go around you or she's going to pull up for the jump shot. And, you know, now you got to come out and play her. So I uh, just love her energy, uh, her savvy. You're going to see a play here in a little while. Not right now. This is going to be another step back. Look at the range. I mean, that's not bad at all. That's with the hand in her face. You're going to see a little play here off a free throw that uh, it's got to drive a, an opposing a coach. It's crazy. This isn't the one right here, though. But this is just uh, seeing the floor, being able to catch and shoot the ball. Great range. And uh, again, like I said, energy is, is, is incredible. And uh, watch, I think this is the pass. This is a little back. To, no, this is the steal. Watch the way she finishes this. One step to the bucket. You know, and Kia, you can speak to this. I mean, he, well, here's the play I'm talking about. Let me go back to that finish play in a minute. Okay, play's over, right? Uh-uh, not so quick. You can't go to sleep on this kid. Uh, so she's real savvy. She's clever. And, uh, you know, just uh, lo love her ability to finish. Here's another play right here. Get to the rim quickly. And that's a sign of quickness and athleticism. And Kia, you're talking about running the floor and putting up points. This is not a bad starting uh, starting spot. No, um, like I said, Abby was a camper. Um, I want to say one of my first camps. And if you, upon meeting her within a minute, if you don't fall in love with her energy, um, she just has such an infectious personality and that translates into the court. Um, she's the ultimate floor general. Um, she's one of those kids that's able to inspire her teammates to give more based on how hard she plays. You know, she's a competitor and um, you're seeing a great deal of versatility in her game. She's not just someone who is just going to drive to the basket all the time because she's fast, but she's put a lot of work in to become a consistent shooter and she's able to stretch the defense. So She's going to be a, a, a dual threat kid and, and really be able to impact what we do, not only on offense, but on defense. That's what I'm really excited about. Yeah. One last point is, uh, you know, so much, I, I would always tell kids if, if you don't like being busy, don't come to this school and yep. her, her off the court stuff, uh, her resume is just packed with all kinds of activities and heck of a track uh, uh, athlete as well, state champion. So, uh, yeah, I think we got a good one in Abby. Did she put entrepreneur in there? You know, she oh, yeah, I saw it. I saw it. So I got to so. introduce her to the Dyer Center. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's time that uh, we take the opportunity to meet Abby and chat with her a little bit. And uh, Abby, we want to welcome you uh, in, uh, virtually to the Lafayette campus. Great. Really great to see you. Uh, you know, jo John and Kia have both mentioned, obviously, your ability as a basketball player. But as I look at your resume, I am just unbelievably uh, attached to all the great things you've done academically. So obviously, I assume that's part of the reason you chose Lafayette. Yeah, definitely. When I was um, looking at schools, like one of my top factors when choosing a college was um, a great academic school and Lafayette fits that perfectly. And I know that you did have somewhat of a uh, basketball relationship with Coach Leone at one point, right? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, when Coach Kia said that uh, I was a camper at our first ever camp, um, my dad met uh, Coach Leon at, outside his house, like on his step. And my dad always talks about like their conversation all the time. And like when I committed, my dad was like, I want to go find him again and talk <laughs> to him and let him know. Like I remember our conversation and how great it was. <laughs> and here I thought, despite knowing John, you were going to come here anyway. So I had it all wrong, all wrong. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about uh, your high school career. I know you've done some extraordinary things at St. Rose High School. You also were a teammate of, uh, of a Lafayette player that's going to be starting with us this year, Michaela Andrews. Yeah. So um, 
I go to St. Rose High School and I've been on the basketball team for four years. I've started for three. My freshman year, um, we won states. Um, and that was like a great year of, to like learn and understand um, the next level between like eighth grade to like a state championship caliber team. And then my sophomore year, I had to like lead a team full of like juniors and seniors. Um, and that was a great challenge for me as I was a younger player, having to make sure that older teammates um, understood that I, I could compete with them and help them. And we won states again my sophomore year. So that was also very exciting. Um, my junior year, either, um, we got our last game in, even though the season like ended the next day and we lost in our um, against St. John Vianney in sectionals, but we had a great season. Um, we started off being ranked number one in the state as well. So it was, it's been a fun three years. And I know you have four state track and field records. <laughs> Yeah, so my freshman year, I wanted to like make new friends. So my mom was like, how about you just go out and join the track team? And I was like, okay. So like the first meet ever, she like threw my like shoes at me and was like, oh, these are spikes, like put them on. I was like, what are these? Why do they feel so weird? And then it like ended up just getting crazier and crazier. Like my first meet was in like the county championships and I placed fifth and I was all mad. And my mom was like, what are you doing? Like <laughs> you never ran before. I was like, I don't know. I feel like I could be pretty good at this. And then I won four sectional titles my freshman year and two state championships in the mile and the 400. And then my sophomore year, I won three sectional titles and won the mile and the two mile. And then my freshman year, I placed fourth in the meet of champions in the mile. And then I broke four school records. <laughs> um, yeah, keep her away from Kirsten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I track, know, right? <laughs> so track and field was, uh, oh, by the way, I think I'll do this. And we end up with four, four state uh, titles. Unbelievable. Uh, also, what are you going to major in in Lafayette? Do you know yet? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm either leaning towards like the business and economics or potentially wanting to become a type of some kind type of doctor so like biology maybe um so i'm not too sure yet and i hear rumors that you're somewhat of an entrepreneur <laughs> i am <laughs> so during covid like there's a bunch of little girls in town who were looking for someone to like train so i first just took like this one little job on of teaching this one young girl and it was a lot of fun and then next thing you know like Everyone kept coming up to me and asking me like, oh, like what's happening here? Like, can my daughter do it? And I ended up training 30 different girls. <laughs> I got so busy. I was like, oh my God, I had to make a schedule of like every day. And it was a lot of fun. And it was like definitely special to like get to teach younger girls and like see like how passionate they are and how like willing they are to learn um, from somebody and how they look up to older girls. And it was just a lot of fun and a great experience. So I assume you're about a year and a half away from Shark Tank. Can I <laughs> make that assumption that <laughs> if Kia can allow you a little bit of extra time to start your own business. Definitely. You know, when I look at high honors in English, highest GPA in theology, highest GPA in world history, and I could go on and on. There's about 20 of them that I could talk about, valedictorian, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, you will be a perfect fit at Lafayette College. Thank you. Abby, it was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, I can't wait to see you on the floor. One final question. What's it look like for your basketball season in this environment with COVID this year? Um, as of now, there's like no fans allowed and we should start like December 5th. Um, and it's gonna be about 15 games. And usually in the past, we've had like over 30. So it's kind of cut in half, but that's still not even sure because there's talks about like moving it into the spring. So we're not necessarily sure what's happening as of now but hopefully it happens. Well, I wish you the best and I hope you get to play a lot of basketball between now and when you come on campus at Lafayette. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you can now meet your uh, fellow recruits as we go back to John and Kia. And, uh, Kia coming up next is uh, Claire Gallagher. Uh, Claire Elizabeth Gallagher, her, her mother Emily played at Stanford University and dad uh, Matthew uh, also went to Stanford University, but she's from the state of Washington, Kia. <laughs> Uh, how in the world did you find her? Technology. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can span the world with technology, you know, but uh, Claire had reached out to us and um, expressed some interest and sent some video. Um, I think Coach Katie was the first to see it on the staff. And then, you know, that led to, you know, the rest of us watching um, the video and 
having conversations with Claire and her family, and it just kind of blossomed from there. And obviously, uh, John, you've seen a little bit of her, and I know you uh, you want to chat a little bit about uh, Claire before we look at some video. Yeah, fundamentally so sound. Uh, obviously, a, a great uh, great basketball DNA runs through her family. But uh, what I noticed uh, is just uh, key. You talk about in your system positionless basketball, mm -hmm. and uh, you know Claire's what five uh, five, five nine nine five ten yeah. ish yeah. But uh, you know, quick enough uh, to to uh, to play on the on the outside. And a great, uh, you'll see the footwork uh, getting to the rim using both hands. Um, but I just I just love her feel for the game, yep. and uh, she's always under control, sees the floor well. And another player that, at least from the limited video I saw, Kia uh, seems to come from a program that plays the game the right way, and I think that that that'll that'll translate well into what you try to do with your with your kids. All right, let's take a, let the two of you take a look at Claire Gallagher in action. Yeah, and you you're going to see right away uh, Gary that uh, uh, she can put the ball on the floor. Uh, there you see the form in the jump shot. You always teach elbow below the ball. Uh, and this is a step back. I think it's a still, I, I, I saw her step back a couple of times, but, uh, you know, as we run this thing through, uh, again, without, you know, without a position there, you see just a little drop step in the lane and the mid game is kind of a lost art. Kids either shoot the three or they get to the rim, but Claire has a tremendous feel for it. Look at this pass right here. Sees the floor. Uh, boy, you know, I, and Gary, you know, working with me all these years, you know, how, how much a great pass, uh, kind of excites me. And there you see, again, just, the ability to move without the ball and and to distribute the ball and and to finish, um, she she's something special. A little crowd. There's a step back and look at the range. Um, that's tough to defend when you can put it on the floor and get to the rim and then you filter in that kind of jump shot and uh, good size step back. You can't leave a good shooter alone. She's out of the video right there. I'm not sure I could see her on that one. Uh, so again, Claire Gallagher is 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 going to be a welcome addition. Uh, here again, you see her. Just that pull-up jump shot. The mid-game is a lost art, and Kia's system, watch when she stops behind the screen. A lot of players you'll see explode off that thing, and they'll do something before they see what's going on. But you saw her take that dribble handoff, stop behind the screen, kind of probe a little bit, and then make her decision. There, again, a little crossover. Watch her change uh, pivot feet and, and finish with the left hand. Um, again, right, like the, the crossover, nice finish right here. Uh, I'll tell you what, I really love her game. Kia, what, uh, watch the backdoor cut right here. Nice to the rim. Watch this pass. Bounce pass, block to block. Sees the floor well. Kia, what do you, I don't know. There's so much to choose from here. What do you like best about her game? You know, um, she's just a playmaker. You know, it, it doesn't matter the position that she's in. She can play with the ball. She can play without the ball. She has a really good basketball IQ, and it's evidence um, just from watching her highlights. I mean, there's there's not one thing in particular that that I like more than the rest of it, but I, I'll tell you this: kids that have a great feel for the game, like you just can't teach those things. You know, her passing, her instincts, and and that's what really excites me. She can score. Yeah, um, so many kids these days they, they want to have taught, kids like that. They, they want to be taught plays, and and uh, you know I, I think uh, at least you and both both you and Coach O'Han don't you're not teaching kids plays, you're teaching them how to play. So translating those, those skills into a system is critical. And Claire looks like she can do that. Well, I think, I know, it's, time, definitely. I think it's time that we uh, meet Claire Gallagher for the first time. And uh, Claire, welcome to uh, National Signing Day. Congratulations on becoming a part of the Lafayette Leopard women's basketball roster in, uh, in just a year. And, uh, you know, I want you to tell your story because it's just a little bit different uh, than Coach Kia's story in that, you know, sometimes it's, it's being the right place, right time. And uh, I know that uh, Lafayette, since you're from Washington, out near Seattle, that uh, it was probably uh, very difficult for you to find Lafayette as the place you want to go. Tell us the story. Yes. So, I mean, in my recruiting process, I was really targeted with the schools I wanted to reach out to and just finding a school that has really great academics and high level basketball was my priority. So I really centered my um, emails around the Ivy League and the Patriot League. So I always had my eyes on Lafayette as a school that really could um, give me both athletically and academically what I was looking for. 
And so after I had committed to Brown in the spring and then decommitted after all the coaches were let go, um, I basically had to get recruited all over again in the midst of a global pandemic. So thanks to technology, film, and great communication from the Lafayette coaches, um, I was able to just learn more about the school, the program, the coaches, and what they stand for. And I was really sold. So I am so excited. So your initial uh, contact came from uh, you or from Kia? Did she find you or you find her? I found her, but <laughs> the coach Katie, the assistant, um, emailed me back in probably like 10 minutes, which is unheard of in the recruiting world, honestly. Um, and so after that first point of contact, they were, um, Coach Kia and all the coaches, honestly, were just so forthcoming and communicating with me. And although I was the one to initially reach out, it was very evident that they really wanted me to as a player, which speaks volumes. I think there's a little bit of a genetic talent in your family. I think we have a little surprise for you here as uh, we talked about your mother playing basketball at Stanford yeah. University. And guess what? We found oh. her. <laughs> Throwback. Yep, that's it. Emily Wagner, she does the Could not resist. Bullet, short hairstyle, yeah, all the yeah. rage. <laughs> Claire, yeah. did you, have you had a chance to, to meet uh, Coach Vanderveer at all over the years? Yes. Or not lost touch? Yeah. Um, so I've grown up going to Stanford basketball camp, like in the summers. And whenever they play UW um, here in Seattle, we would go and get free tickets and kind of just talk. I think my mom would just get to say hi at the end of the game because kind of get to sit right behind the bench and stuff. So I was kind of indoctrinated with college basketball, women's basketball and Pac-12 basketball from a really young age. So I really looked up to college basketball players and my mom. And this has kind of been a goal from really early on in my life, so. So who's the better player when you're one-on-one -on -one in the driveway? Who's the better player? Oh, that's the golden question. I couldn't find point, video. I needed to find video. <laughs> I know, I know. At this We play kind of different positions. She was more of a true point guard. Um, I don't know. I think I might beat her, but don't tell her I said that. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you're also a great academic student, uh, on a roll for four years. And, but you have a lot of unique interests. Uh, you're really interested in art in, in unique ways. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I've taken AP art um, a couple times and created a pottery or ceramics portfolio. I first took a pottery class in eighth grade and really just fell in love with it. Um, just like how you use your hands, like the dexterity of it and just the freedom of it. And so whether it be sculpture, throwing pots on the wheel, I just fell in love with it. So that's something I'm interested in. I'm interested in acrylic painting, honestly, all types of artistic ventures, I can get really hooked on. I always say that Joanne's and Hobby Lobby and Michael's, I could spend way too long in there. <laughs> yeah. Claire, is this something you want to pursue uh, academically? Yeah, at the moment, I do also love science and math. So somehow merging those passions of design and art with um, STEM is kind of what I'm hoping for. I don't know exactly how that's going to work itself out, whether it be in engineering. Um, it will. It will, Claire. Okay, real quick, you know, uh, you got to go downtown to meet Ed Kearns. Uh, okay. And, and uh, he's incredible with that stuff. And I actually ran into a kid that I thought, I knew him well, and I thought he was an engineering major. He was in the art building. But he was designing a substance that could be used in his, uh, in his artwork. It was a gel-like substance, but he actually created it. Hey, trust me. You can get there from here. Uh, that's why yeah. I told you before, all those kids who ended up at Brown, they're going to be working for you someday. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, obviously, like, that's a huge reason why Lafayette was, like, spoke to me. Just the combination of kind of a smaller, more intimate education with great science and math, but just a lot of professors and staff that can really help you combine your interests to achieve your goals. So, I'm excited. And, and by the way, I heard when you were in quarantine that, you taught yourself to be a seamstress. You're now making your own clothing. <laughs> Correct. I was like, I don't know. You kind of see either clothing online that you can like, I can make that. So <laughs> I bought a sewing machine. I was like, how hard can it be? And if I set my mind on something that I want to learn how to do with the internet these days, like I, I believe in myself that I can figure it out. So after a couple of weeks, you know, pretty, pretty good. 
made a dress. Kia, Kia I've, I've already noticed, and I've noticed it over the years, that it's not always just the basketball talent that you look at. When you mm -hmm. see the personalities of these mm -hmm. uh, young ladies and the young men uh, that we're going to talk to, I understand why you just become attracted to them, not just for basketball. No, you, you definitely want to be surrounded by people you enjoy um, and that you feel like you can help. And just, you know, most of our program is about leadership development. So you need to see young people who kind of see themselves in that capacity. And I think, you know, from the young ladies that are um, joining our, our family officially today to the ones that are currently on the team, you know, they all fit that mold. Okay, Claire, uh, just a, a heads up, John's wardrobe could use some really uh, <laughs> skipping up. So when you get here, just get his sizes and, and make whatever you can for him. <laughs> Sounds good. That's Larry. Nice Claire, to meet you, Claire. Uh, good luck. Claire, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, again, have a great senior year. I hope you get to play a lot of basketball and enjoy your senior year the way you should. And we'll see you uh, in a short while on Lafayette's campus. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Claire Gallagher. All right, next up is uh, Kylie Favors. And uh, Kia, she's out of Old Bridge, New Jersey. Uh, tell us a little bit about Kylie and, and what you liked about her personality and her game. Well, I'll just tell you this, Kylie's another one of those kids that just her energy, uh, when you meet her, the smile, uh, just infectious. You know, she's a fun kid, but she's also a competitor. And, and I love that blend. And, and she wants to be challenged uh, both in the classroom and on the court. And that's, that's right up our alley as a staff. So, you know, she's another young lady that's gonna add dimension and a little flair to what we do. John, and your take. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, this young lady can fill it up and she's got great size. Another one of those positionless players, 5'11", uh, you know, strong enough to mix it up around the basket, but uh, her ball skills, you'll see some of the moves she, when she puts the ball on the floor and then steps back and shoots a jump shot, her range uh, is, is virtually unlimited. And uh, again, good basketball DNA. Dad played at Brandeis, a very good division three school from a very good uh, a Division Three conference, and her mom went to UMass Dartmouth. I'm not sure if she played up there, but uh, I love this young lady's uh, skill set uh, to go along with. Uh, you know, is she a forward? Is she a guard? I don't know. She's a player. She's a player. <laughs> well, let's take a look at her. Let's show the video. Here is uh, Kylie Favors. Yeah, and you'll see right away, uh, folks, that uh, this young lady's going to probably have the ability to uh, again there's a learning curve for freshmen. You don't want to hang the hat on them too early and put a lot of pressure on them. But this, uh, this young lady, you talk about catch and shoot. Uh, you know, if she gets the ball, you've got to get up on her. And, uh, you know, they always, uh, you're always cautious about, uh, uh, about highlight films uh, because they're not going to show any bad ones. But what you do want to look at, you want to look at the, the release, the way she sets the ball up, the way her feet are in a ready position right here, one step and bang so it's a quick release uh you, you you've got to account for her you've got to account for her on the offensive end you see her moving without the ball finishing around the basket again uh, i love her size and again almost out of the frame uh knocking it down and she hasn't hit the rim yet so uh yeah this young lady can do a lot of things and uh you're going to see in a moment uh again coming off the screen just a quick jump stop and a, and a jump shot in a little while you're going to see a great move of her putting it on the floor but in the meantime, just doing great stuff around the bucket. Again, catch, shoot. Uh, Kia, you know, I know you love the ki love kids that can put the ball in the basket. And uh, Kylie fits that bill, doesn't she? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, that was one of the things when I went and watched her play in person. You know, no moment's too big for her. If she's open, she's going to play to her skill set. And as you can see, she can shoot the ball really well. Um, and what, what I'm most excited about and what I saw this summer is that when the defenders, you know, would get up on her to try to take away the catch and shoot, you know, she's expanded her game and she can put the ball on the floor and she pull ups and gets the rim, um, and become a decision maker. And, you know, she has, um, a, a great deal of speed and athleticism that I think that we can unlock, you know, on the defensive end as well. So again we're trying to get to 80 points and you, you need to take the ball in the basket to get there and she definitely helps us absolutely you're going to see uh near the end of these highlights i think from the top of the key she puts the ball on the floor and it's just uh remember the old n one videos right here i think this is a little crossover watch the setback boom 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 step back bang so yeah she can put it on the floor <laughs> it was pretty good right there 
Creating your own shot. <laughs> well, let's meet her. Kylie Favors, uh, join us and uh, hello and welcome. Uh, it's really great to see you. And so what do you think of your two teammates that you've uh, had a chance finally to meet? Um, I love them. They're great people. Um, I can't wait to play with them. And I'm um, sure they feel the great. same way about you. Uh, I, Dad played basketball at Brandeis. Is he the guy that kind of motivated you to get into the game? Yeah, most definitely. Um, at a very young age, he's always wanted me to play. Um, I didn't cave in until like fifth grade, though, but he's always <laughs> been bugging me about playing. So, yeah. Why, uh, why Lafayette? What was it that uh, drew you to the school? Well, um, to me, it's a perfect athletic and academic fit. I was looking for a school high in academics and with a great basketball program as well, and Lafayette fit that. Well, and I know through the amazing support of the coaches, they will develop me to be um, a great player and person. That's I can pretty much guarantee you, you're right about that. <laughs> you know, yeah. Kia wants to score 80 points a game. <laughs> and, I, and I think she's depending on you to really get up and down the floor to help with that endeavor. Uh, yeah. But I have a feeling you probably don't mind uh, doing a lot of scoring. John was kidding you about never going to the basket, but we know you can do that too. Yes, yes. I take it to the basket, too. Um, it was just a lot of the plays are run for me to shoot. So that's what I did. But I definitely take it to the basket as well. Just wasn't shown in the highlights as much. Well, it goes without saying that you're also a terrific uh, student. I know you, you're a lover of writing, right? What kind of writing? Yes. Have you done? Um, I love creative writing. Um, I like to finish stories that don't necessarily have an ending or like I wrote a mini book when I was in third grade <laughs> and um, wow. just do a lot of like writing on the side. It's really fun for me. So, yeah. I, I, excuse me, Gary, but I'll, I'll tell you, uh, Kylie, if, if there, uh, if a prospective Lafayette student were to ask me what, what is the single most important uh, academic characteristic, I would say the ability to write in almost anything you do or if you're an engineer, our engineers are required to, to write well. And obviously, uh, you know, pre-law or in, in, in business, uh, if you can write, uh, you can basically <laughs> write your own ticket. Uh, that's a great skill to have. So hone that thing and don't ever take it for granted. Thank you. I see you also are involved in the community, you Rise Against Hunger. Uh, uh, is that a passion for you also? Um, yeah, so at my school, we do a lot of community service, and um, one of the events was Rise Against Hunger, and um, it's always super fun to just help out, and that was a very fun experience, and I've done it for the past two years that I was at Rutgers Prep, so yeah. So what do you hear about your basketball season upcoming? Uh, are you going to be able to get the season in? Yeah, so um, my coach said that we definitely will have a season, but it depends on where it will be. Um and it'll start probably in late December, but we're actually like not certain. Everything's up in the air. It's not like 100%, but she's pretty positive or optimistic about it. And that's how I am too. Kia, another young lady with an infectious personality. Yep, we can't have too many. <laughs> no, that's true, that's true. Uh, we certainly uh, wish you the best in your senior year, Kylie. Uh, thanks for spending time with us and uh, work on uh, going to the basket. So John. <laughs> I don't will worry about it, Kylie. You. I, you know, it, it, you were so per in those highlights. I'm trying to, th I'm trying to find something that she can't do. Coach O had the best. Our men's coach, Coach o Hamlin, um, one of his recruits from a couple of years ago was going up to play a, a tournament, a, a, a PIAA state game, and one of the other opposing coaches called Coach and said, "Listen, I know you recruited this kid. He's coming to Lafayette. We've got to play against him in the state tournament. Does he have any weaknesses?" <laughs> you know what Coach O'Hallen said? Well, he thought about it for a minute. And he said, "Well, he can't speak French. Well, <laughs> doesn't help the coach at all." <laughs> so I don't know if you can speak a different language, but if you if you can't add it to the resume, <laughs> Kylie, enjoy your the rest of uh, your year and have a great Thank basketball you. season. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. Well, Kia, uh, a final a final thought on the, the three young ladies. I think you've done a spectacular job. It's the staff. Um, everything's a team effort with us, and um, they've done an outstanding job of finding young ladies that fit the culture of our program, but also address um, the areas that we feel are necessary to continue to press towards um, building a championship team. 
I think it's a credit to you too that your staff is back. Tom Lochner, Natalie Jarrett, Katie Kalinsky, they're all back. So uh, everybody's ready to go. Yes. Yes. And hopefully you guys are ready too. Got some surprises for you. <laughs> oh, well, I love to be surprised. Uh, January 2nd, Lehigh comes to the Kirby yes. Sports Center and we'll be Absolutely. there to bring, bring that game your way. Kia, in, enjoy. It was great seeing you and we'll see you uh, sooner than later for sure. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Have a good night.